So, um, so I just before before we start, I wanted to ask you a question. Um, are you guys familiar with neural prosthetics? So, okay. so in, in lay terms, a, a brain chip, just putting a little computer chip in your mind, there's also a bunch of other ways to make a neural prosthetic. But um, it's not a big deal. It's a little chip it's in it's your brain. Well, it's, it's, it's quite, yeah, <laughs> yeah. If you, connecting your brain to the cloud is a very interesting futuristic concept. And so I just wanted to get Indra's perspective on brain chips and connecting the brain to the cloud and having all the access to all the information ever. Yeah, I mean, neurons are, are binary, so it's the same code. It's actually you know, remarkably easy to get the brain to accept an electronic device. So for example, when they first were trying to figure out how to do cochlear implants to restore hearing, uh, you know, they put this little electrode in your cochlea, which is the part of your inner ear that translates sound pressure waves into a neural signal. And they spent all this time trying to figure out how are we going to get the brain to like figure out this signal. And the truth is they didn't have to do it at all. They put the implant and with training the brain just learned to use it. There was like no coding required. So. Wow. I, I just read that yeah, researchers at the University of Southern California just uh, inserted a chip into these patients who already had, I believe, epilepsy. So they had, you know, already a brain hookup and they were able to improve the memory of uh, of these people by like 30%. I would explain more, but my memory needs to be improved further for me to remember what I'm talking about. But I did read that bit, and that was fascinating. That just happened uh, now. Yeah, so it's actually, the work I did at UCLA for my PhD was with those same patients, with those same implants. And uh, yeah, it's remarkable what we've learned even in the last 10 years. And yeah, it's it's... It's amazing. I wouldn't say, I mean, their memories for a very specific thing might have improved 30%. It's not like, oh, all of a sudden they can go from, you know, not remember anything to, you know, remembering everything, everyone they've seen. It wasn't like seen. their working like memory shot through yeah, the Yeah, I mean, memory is not one unitary thing. We have very specific types of memory for different things. And so they basically, you know, enhanced one specific type of memory, but not, say, yeah, working memory or, you know, memory for things that happened to you in the far past or the faces of, you know, your high school friends. It's just the hippocampus that deals with memory, or is it other parts? Yes. Well, wow. Than a Sorry, I Whoa, tried to make it funny. Excuse I tried me. to make it funny. I just couldn't think Could of it. Could you just wanted to be smart? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, I get it. <laughs> hippocampus. There's hippos in the brain. <laughs> yeah. A little seahorse. <laughs> Why is it called the hippocampus? What, where to get that? <laughs> Not name? hippo. It's, it's hippocampus, which okay. is. Let's just call oh, it the hippocampus. It's like hippo. it's like a university for hippos. It's the hippocampus. There you go. That was a good one. Thank you. That's for my uh, joke book for six-year-olds. I don't get it. I don't <laughs> get it. <laughs> <laughs> Could you, I, don't, I don't understand what you mean. I'll, I'll share notes with you later. It's, it's fairly complex. It's the brain that helps store memories. It looks no, like I mean, a I, I don't get his pun. That's why it's called Oh, gotcha. Oh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it w certain people found it super funny. I'm just looking at it. <laughs> All right, so we will follow our format. So we'll jump into the first question. We'll keep talking about all this great stuff along the way. Are you guys excited to answer these questions? Yeah. yeah. All right, you'll earn some fun prizes along the way. So we'll go ahead and have you read off the questions as we go. All right, how many neurons does the average brain have? Adult human brain, I should be specific. 10 to the 12th. What, what, what? To the 12th. what a nerd. Wow. That's an answer that's in scientific notation. That's a, little that's a lot. 10 to the 12th. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, a trillion. 100 billion. Is 10 to the 12th? Is that what no, that's So let's, let's start getting some 12. answers and see and tell them if, if they're right or they're wrong. Oh, I said 100 billion. 100 billion. How? So, uh, is that yes or is that, that is true? That is the most commonly thought answer, but it oh. is wrong oh, by a close. bit. Okay. Wait, but should we be Is this it high or it low? Should we be looking for an answer? Go ahead. Yeah, come, let's on look for an come on in. Come on in. There's plenty of seats. Come on in. High we fives. High fives. I bid yeah. Oh, there we go. <laughs> high five. Everyone yeah, gets it. Yeah. yeah. High five. Wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love this it. I love it. I love it. This is a motivational seminar. Every everyone is a winner now, here. What made their brains want to do that? Like, what did they? I mean, 100 billion is awfully close. <laughs> it's a university kind of for uh, elephants. Let's <laughs> just go with that. Let's just walk on stage. Yeah. When we get in. 100 billion and one. 100 billion and one. That, yeah, price is right <laughs> over here. That's a good shot. That's the strategy. Yeah. You're gonna, a refrigerator is coming your way. Lowest right. bid that doesn't Did go over wins. Did you have an answer? 300 billion? Wow, that would be a very smart person. Nope. Wow. 300 billion. <laughs> That's probably me. Is it? 
All right. No, no, is no, it no. a linear? The, the more no, cells. I would, I would say Wrong it, but I, I accidentally yeah. saw, saw it. I the more change. cells, the smarter you are. You said that would be a very smart person. Yeah. Well, because is it exponential or linear? Uh, well, we don't know. Wouldn't it honestly. more have to do more with synapses than neurons in terms of? I mean, it would have to do with both in yes, terms of intelligence. Yes, both. Yeah. Come on, yeah. Yeah. The, the, the elephant man had a very <laughs> large brain. <laughs> we have a ukulele in the audience now. I love it. I love it too. This is San Francisco. There's, you there's can't leave without there. your juggling balls and your ukulele when you get. To can we uh, can we talk about how how many uh, neurons does the average uh, Trump supporter have? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> None. Uh, I don't think that's digging true. Digging deep. Did we, did how, we, how do you vote if you don't have any neurons? Oh. We, 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 have, we have another answer. answer. There's okay, a Trump answer. voter in here who feels like shit right now. I was just going to say I was going to say one million. I don't think they would come I was going to bring million. it down. Uh, one billion. One million. He came down a lot. No. Definitely. Shall we? Shall we? So who was closest so far? I think 100 billion is closest. 100 billion is closest. Eureka! All right. Woo! Give it up, everyone. Eureka! Eureka come on up. Yeah. Close enough. And we'll find out. Come on down. Yeah, Don't be afraid. Uh, oh, you'll hear the answer. <laughs> you'll hear the All right. High five. Come, all right. What's your name, my man? Daniel. Daniel. All right. And you, you feel confident you have about, what, 100 billion? I think so. Something like that. Close enough. You round up. You're that smart anyway. Absolutely. Are you good with brain games? Are you? Sure. <laughs> have you ever played a brain game? Okay. <laughs> Are you high right now? <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> how about how about like uh, IQ tests? Have you done those? Yes. Are you willing to reveal uh, what your result was here on stage? I don't remember. <laughs> that's a. S he must be smart because that's a smart answer. Here's your brain games. Hopefully it'll improve your neurons in your here brain. We go. Give him a round of applause. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, so the correct answer is 86 billion, but actually a lot of your textbooks will say 100 billion, because until very recently, that's what we thought was the number of neurons in the brain. So congratulations, Daniel, you read some textbooks. Um, Good job. It turns out the textbooks were written before anybody had actually bothered to count. Uh, so there was this Brazilian neuroscientist named Susana Herculano Huzel who decided we should actually count before we print this through in many, many more textbooks. And in order to count all these neurons, it's very hard, but she devised a way of making a kind of soup and from the soup, she was able to see how many cells and cell particles were in the soup and therefore count exactly how many neurons we have. Turns out the average brain has about 86 billion. How many brains did she have to do this with? Gosh, I don't know. Probably Can like Can you do 10? it like Coinstar, where you're just kind of yeah. motion, <laughs> pushing the brain through <laughs> the machine, and it's like ding, 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 ding. Yeah, I, I want to know. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Have you ever made sausages? You like Coinstar. Like yeah. How did she yeah. get the, the soup, way? though? Let's. Did she start with meatloaf and said, no, this doesn't work. Let's brain make a soup. soup. <laughs> she get that. She, it's a little creepy if someone says, yeah, I, uh, I do research. She what do you do probably followed some soup? paramedics around. Yeah, this well, is... You know, the brain is 75% water, it makes right. sense for it to be yeah. a soup. This, now, what kind of, like, chick, is, is chicken stock? Water? What do we add on? Be a bone broth. Maybe. Bone broth, yeah. maybe? <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, can we get a little more detail about how she yeah. turned it in soup? Okay, well, um, no, because I don't really know, but I can okay. talk about something else more uh, interesting. Well, well, uh, well I Can you yes, act it out? Yes, you, you definitely <laughs> like should do that. the soup, but, perhaps? But, but just quickly, there, so there's a difference between neuronal cells and Glial Gle cells. Glial yes, cells? Yes, yes. All right, wait, what, what's, what's that? What's Daniel, the difference? Daniel, how many, what's the ratio of glial cells to neurons? You know it, buddy. Okay, it, so the textbooks like will tell yeah. you it's 10 to 1, but that's another number <laughs> that's... that's 10 up. glial cells? 10 glial cells. To so one just neuron. like you have more bacteria in uh, your body than you uh, do actual body cells, which uh, also isn't really true, um, that... Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, that they thought, okay, you have more support cells in the brain than neurons. You have 10 times as many support cells as neurons. It turns out that number's not true either. Uh, Susanna counted those as well. And it turns out the number's closer to like 1.2 to 1. Now, how did she determine that? Was it like making a, like a bisque or something with it? <laughs> what, what, what type of cooking did yeah. she do to determine that number? <laughs> yeah, so well it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's the same process. Oh, the soup. But, you know, she was able to figure out what bits belong Did she add any what? protein powder to the soup? That's usually what I do, because yeah. I like to, you know. Well, you know, it's funny. She came to the Bay Area and she called it Soylent. Oh, and wow. Yeah, Tech people Yum. food. Tech, Tech people, people food. food. Yeah. So, so, the, so she stained the color of the nerve cell of neurons, and then that's how she was able right, to. Right, and then she's able to count all the different 
particles that, you know, some of which belong to neurons, some of which belong to glial cells, and then figure out, you know. And then what's a what more interesting is. thing that you want so to say? So the thing that I think is more interesting is that, you know, she also wanted to see whether brains, human brains were special in the sense that, like, do we actually have more neurons than we should given our size and given the fact that we're primates? And so she created this model where she figured out for our average size. No, we're not. Jesus created how us. How many neurons should we have? given the f that we're primates, and she found out that we should have about 92 billion. Oh. <laughs> so what happened to that missing? <laughs> <laughs> so it turns out we're all Eight. a little bit below average. No, no wait, wait, but th that's also like the average. I was, how many soups did she create? <laughs> just one? <laughs> no. Just one person's soup. How many did she do, though, to average it out? I don't know. I does don't she have know. like a huge... <laughs> I'm still I'm still upset that the government lied to us about the ratio of glial cells glial to, cells to yeah. neurons and the average neurons. I mean, it's like, I mean, the, just like they lied to us about 9/11. This you is know? true. Just yeah, like, no, what the it's fuck? a you know what I mean? Yeah, it's all conspiracy. It's a, so. it's a conspiracy. <laughs> so so uh, I think I think this is a good segue into the next question. Why don't you read that one? Oh yeah. So the next question is why are babies born so useless? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, oh, we have an answer. All right, hold on. Premature or useless. This is definitely like a San Francisco question. There's some uses. If they're, not, if they're not fur and they walk on all four legs, they are useless. Uh, it's because we have an extended childhood, and we need that in order to allow us to learn more. Our, our, our brains need to uh, develop, and they're already big enough, and they need to get bigger. And if they were too big, then they wouldn't fit outside it. They wouldn't fit through the birth canal of a woman, so they need more time outside to... So the first part yeah. of that answer is true. We need more time outside, uh, but, the s but the idea that it's because we wouldn't fit through the birth canal is false. Oh. I think oh. we can give her a Eureka. All right. Eureka! eureka. <laughs> Come on down. All right. We know each other, but just for the audience sake, your name? Lindsay. All right. Now, now, why did you think, or when did you hear about this whole birth canal can't fit the baby head through it? Um, I, when did you just, it just came into your mind at some point? And pop, I don't know. I just knew it. You just knew that. <laughs> and that's not correct, right? <laughs> okay. That's fine. It's not a big deal. Did you have any, trouble, any trouble fitting through uh, Kevin, the canal? Kevin, be careful. I know. <laughs> when you were being born, was there any issues maybe? Yeah, it was a C-section. Okay. Oh. It's not working? Yeah, not for me. Okay. Why don't we ask her if she thinks babies are useless? <laughs> Do you find babies useless? Be honest. Um, so I have a one-month niece. One-month one month old niece. I almost said one-month-year-old niece. That wouldn't make any sense. I have a one-month-old niece, so no, babies are not useless. So sweet. Before sh uh, she was born, were they useless? <laughs> I also have a nephew who's a year, so no, they're not useful. Okay, so you've got a year. How year does that month. prove that they're not yeah. useful? It just means yeah. you love them. That which is yeah. means you know they exist. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so th we have for you this wonderful book, Experimenting with Babies. Uh -oh. Ow! Yeah. Okay, this yeah. is going off the rails. That's yeah. not, this isn't appropriate. 50 uh -oh. amazing sign <laughs> projects you can perform on your kid. How many molecules Booms. are in that book? Scientists are always know. doing How this anyway. How many molecules does this book have? This is about, yeah. About 90 30, billion? 30, is, 40 billion. Is there a section in there to read, Kevin? <laughs> oh, oh, there is. All right. So let, let's do one of the baby um, experiments. Can you do it with us? Okay, how about this? I'm going to read it. You, you're going to be the parent. I won't be the baby. <laughs> should I be the baby? You're on a comedian? Uh, one of you guys want to be What's the baby? I, I feel like Ben should be the baby. Experimenting with babies. Holy fuck, that's pretty outrageous. Okay, yeah. just, <laughs> I'm glad you just whatever. caught up with us. Okay. Creative director, director on that campaign probably Okay, so, so Ben, can you be the baby? I hate him, but sure. Okay. Okay, fine. <laughs> okay so you have suck. your baby sit in a high chair, rather safe place. Not sure I would have. And perfect. spend spend a moment engaging with him. Smile, sing, talk, play. Why don't you do that? Go ahead. It's a little Ben. Oh, yeah, you can <laughs> shake the baby hand. shakes hands. How are you? I'm two months old. Smile, sing, Good talk, to see play. You. I'm useful. There we yeah, go. Good. Uses. Now turn your head briefly away. No, not okay. the baby, just you. Can I really fit out of you? And then when you turn back, gaze at your baby with a neutral expression and do not engage with him. 
That is the experiment right there. You may find that your baby attempts to engage with you by smiling, babbling, reaching out to you, but it will soon be puzzled and unnerved by your lack of response and begin to frown, yawn, look away, or cry. Could you top me off, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> right. Once you notice your baby becoming upset, if you begin interacting with him, he'll begin to become content. That's basically just like dismissing your baby. It's apple juice. Okay, bring it home for Christmas and experiment with your baby. Give her a round of applause. <laughs> All right. And All right. So remember those 86 billion neurons that you have? Um, well, they're useless, of course, if they don't have synapses, is uh, Julia. If they don't have connections with other neurons. And in order, to, in order for us to make the right connections, those neurons have to be engaged with the world. So, for example, your visual cortex, which helps you see, uh, needs input from the visual world to figure it out, and to know what the regularities are, to know what's what should should pay attention to, and so forth. And that's how the brain wires up. So that's why babies born are born premature. This idea that um, it's because the head wouldn't fit through the birth canal makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, I've had a baby. It's hard uh, to put it through the birth canal. <laughs> I can tell you, it hurts. Uh, Try doing stand up. <laughs> 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 Every. Uh, it's a stillborn, ever okay, I'm sorry. But the truth is, is that the baby's skull isn't fully formed, and also there was this idea that, well, why can't women just have bigger hips? And the answer was, well, because it would prevent them from walking, and I have pretty big hips, and I can walk just fine. Um, so it turns out that's not why we don't have bigger hips. Um, there might be some other reason, but, you know, there's no, there's no sort of evolutionary reason why we couldn't have, you know, solve the obstetrical dilemma, as it's called, by either giving us women bigger hips or, you know, by, by babies having bigger brains, unless it was that it's just not useful for babies uh, to have bigger brains. The bigger limiting factor, and this will come back later on in this evening again, is that at about 40 weeks gestation, the mother cannot consume enough calories to feed both herself and the baby. Uh. Um, that's about the life of the placenta, and that seems Whoa. to be the limiting factor, that around that time, there's no more food to fuel a bigger brain. So what happens after that? Who They both starve together or what? Uh, one comes out. Yeah, and okay. And Are we back to the soup it. thing? Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, with so soup. With, with soup. I so, with so the fetus consumes so much energy? After 40 weeks. Yeah, and in fact, the brain takes up 20% of the all the calories that we eat. Um, we don't know that it wasn't done that calculation for a fetus, but probably a whole lot of the calories that it consumes is actually going to fuel its brain. Uh, so that's that's the idea. Wait, so th this is uh, this happens even if, if the mother's eating soylent too? <laughs> all of that? <laughs> the, the brain soup? Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Totally. Yeah, yeah. At some point, you can't. You just can't. Is that that's why the baby is born at nine months? Mm -hmm. uh, versus is ten months or twelve months? Ten, it is ten months if you're oh counting. Okay. Forty, forty, uh, four okay. weeks in a month. Yeah, that's that's like the biggest, you know, disappointment for me when I got pregnant was that it's ten months, not nine. Uh -huh. oh shit. After nine after sounds way better. After giving birth, do you recommend eating the placenta? Definitely it, it's, not. There's a lot of nutrition. Oh you God. just were saying no, it, it, it's in LA. They do it. It's holistic oh, they do it here. Here too. Uh, and you know, okay. So what if you had some hot so sauce or something that just kind of <laughs> helps things? Tapatio. The doula. Yeah, the doula's yeah. got a blender. But there are <laughs> just eat the baby. Nice. No, just eat the baby. Uh, data showing now that eating your placenta can cause harm to you ah. uh, through infection uh, uh. and various other ways. It is dangerous. Somebody to tried eat it. Your oh, I people know, do it all the time. I want to know the like the backstory. You know, no, oh, they oh, do oh, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it. it's 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 a thing. They didn't um, put people through clinical trials where they're like, we'll have one group eat the placenta and one group not eat the placenta. Uh, like, uh, it was I just a bunch of morons that decided I, I think the they just like watched Gwyneth no. Paltrow do it or something like no, that. No, but they did find a bunch of people who ate their placenta yeah. got very sick. Well, so I've so heard <laughs> that the placenta is sentient. What do you think about that? <laughs> 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 um, I don't think there are any neurons in the placenta, and mm. uh, but sentience but it's comes from uh, neurons. But that's, All not, right. that's not stopping so it. There, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. there are species of animals, uh, birds, etc., that just let their offspring mm -hmm. don't even... Uh, well, now we need to get to this, but I wanted to touch on that real quick. But, um, well, whatever. 
can we let's just touch on this real quick, then we'll get to that. But so the idea is that is that hu- veins? Humans, these are these are neurons. When you're oh, a newborn, sorry. there's less neurons as Varicose you develop. Veins, you gain I more neural structure in your brain. Um, the two years to no, adult no, 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 thing no, no, is interesting. No, 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 that's not what it shows, right? What it shows is that at two years, you've got more densely packed neurons. Correct. Than, uh, exactly. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I was that was the last thing I was oh, saying. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Correct. That's the cool thing, right? Yeah. Is so that you're why two year olds are so annoying? two year old Is that why they're so obnoxious? The yeah. I was just going to say, is that why they're so annoying? Okay. <laughs> yeah. And how old is <laughs> your child? He'll be four in January. Okay, so even more dense than this. Uh, dense neurons, that is, not dense as in. Hopefully less dense. Oh, less dense. Uh, than the two year old, because by at this point, what's happening is that you're getting pruning, in that the neurons that are not being you know, used, that are not being engaged, are actually taken away. And in fact, around three or four, um, one of the theories behind why uh, some people develop autism spectrum disorders is because there's a problem in pruning. In fact, that they have too many of the neurons in, in you know, specific areas of the brain. Does uh, is, is pruning uh, involve apoptosis at all? I just wanted to say that word. Yes. Wow. And it's, it's coming up. We'll talk about it. Oh, okay, <laughs> Mrs. Nerd. What's <laughs> going on here? My grandmother used to prune. Yeah. <laughs> But I just wanted to say my wife and I picked out the one month for our living room floor. <laughs> and, uh, we've been very happy That's with very it. That's very nice. It's a good one. Yeah. It's very easy to clean. <laughs> oh, that was boy. A good one. Um, so ju- I just want to touch base on that real quick before we go um, to the next question. Because for other animals uh, in the kingdom, they're in order for them to be in in optimal, uh, able to not need to be cuddled and be useless, like we say, babies, um, sometimes they have to be in the gestation period in the female for 18 months, 20 months, more than that, like in primates, it's around that. Um, and so we're just nine, 10 months. And so it's shorter than for us. And that's why another reason why obviously visual cortex has to develop all that stuff. But for other animals as well, they just leave the thing and then they're like, no, you handle it on yourself. I forgot which animals. Do you remember which ones? Uh, no, yeah. but you're right. There, yeah, and there are other species of primates that have uh, you know, comparatively longer Mike gestation. Closer, closer. Oh, oh yeah. there are other species of primates that have comparatively longer gest- gestation periods. I don't know if they're absolutely longer, but they're comparatively longer. Um, and, and then they have less interaction with their parents uh, later on. But they also have, you know, their lifespans are shorter. They have less. It's know, lizards, to, to answer your question. <laughs> they, don't, they don't give a shit about their kids. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah, heard about this. Think, uh, yeah, you're right, because uh, turtles and um, their uh, reptiles still Amphibs, lay, yeah. they lay eggs rather than uh, just stay inside. So yeah. they have every th- all the nutrients they need in the egg. Less of a connection. With the bob. Well, less of a <laughs> connection. He's starting his connect. abbreviation thing. Yeah. 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 He can help himself. And I like, like to save time. Ground. Okay, we have question? a question. All right, oh, one question. second. Just yell it out. Don't okay. wait. Well, what if you cooked a placenta? Then oh, we're back to this. That was five minutes ago. Yeah. Oh, we got another question. Wait, wait, wait. In the yeah. Did you ask that because you're feeling guilty? What if you cook out? I'm just thinking. I cooked a placenta 50 years ago and I still. Wouldn't that remove all the infections? So, you know, that's the question. Texas barbecue. Or you question. Maybe a little formaldehyde. I think the argument is that if you cook it, then you lose all the nutrients. It doesn't taste as good either. You want that raw sushi type texture. it and they dry it and they put it into pills. Yes, great for great. great I feel <laughs> you're asking what if, though you've already been there. Is that, we don't. Yeah, it's, co- it's mean, controversial, it's child protective but. Services. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> but but hu- human breast milk cheese, that's fine, right? What? Human breast milk cheese. Human breast right? Breast we all know uh, about that. Yeah. We, well, that's old hat. <laughs> <laughs> they do that. Uh, you haven't read the articles in Brooklyn? They made human. Br- okay, I'll shut up. No one's. <laughs> No one's coming over to my wine and cheese party tonight. That's not happening. Definitely not. Thanks for helping me lose. I'll be there. You're welcome. Yeah. I still can't believe that you said that was so good. That was hilarious. Yeah. Thanks for one upping us. One upping (laughs) the comedians. You clearly (laughs) did. All right. So let's go on to the next question. Question here. Oh, cool sound effect. All right. So um, does intelligence correlate with brain size? Fuck yeah. Yeah. Oh. Hells yeah. Can I really, I really hope not or else. That's a big <laughs> blow to feminism. Big uh, blow. 
Is it? You, what, men well, have bigger men heads? Men typically have bigger heads, right? You, uh, figurative, figuratively brain, speaking? Okay. They have typically be bigger brains, which does not necessarily mean that they're more intelligent. Okay. Uh, there but go. there is a moderate correlation. Let's oh, wait, let's get the that. answer oh, oh, first. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What do you think? Let's, can you go into the audience and, and let's get Well, we were going to maybe go deeper because a lot of you said no. Maybe we'll have someone elaborate a little bit. <laughs> You're like, I don't know. <laughs> All right, hold on. We have an elaborator. Uh, so it, depends, it depends on the curves, right? Yeah, so it depends on the curves, right? On the, the curves? The curse? Yeah. The oh, curse? you mean the gyri and what curse? Yeah. So who, um, who put okay. a curse on what the curves? What curves are you talking the about? Oh, curves. Of the brain. Like Hansel so Gretel? Like witches again. Size. Okay, what if we went by weight? Would weight. That, would no, that it depends. It's it water it weight. It depends on, on the <laughs> uh, surface area. Yeah. yeah surface. Mostly water weight. Vagalas. <laughs> <laughs> it's mostly water weight. <laughs> Yeah, we can give a Eureka to that. Okay. Eureka! Eureka! Eureka. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bigger brain. All right, prize time. We've made so much progress. Uh, All right, hello. What is your name? Urute. I'll not r try to pronounce that. Okay. <laughs> that was U Urute? Budapest. B Burute? Burute? You guys are being racist. Burute. Burute. Yeah. I'll just put my mic on. Burute, get it right. Did you study uh, the brain? It sounds like you do. You're very knowledgeable. Well, I, I didn't study brain cells, but uh, I know some knowledge about neuroscience. So also, she's Lithuanian, and so yeah. am I, and we're very smart people. Okay, yeah, I'm not... I'm Sometimes not people read. <laughs> Sometimes people read. Lithuanians nice. are uh, smart. Point. Boom. They're very smart. Okay, well... Um, yeah, so uh, intelligence in humans also correlates with myopia. <laughs> so whether or not you wear glasses, and it correlates with height, uh, because people who are taller tend to be larger. And um, but there is a, a more mundane reason for why brain size correlates with, uh, or sorry, intelligence correlates with height. Uh, for a quick bonus question, does anybody can imagine why? Yeah. Um, okay, corrected for age. <laughs> Oh, the encephalization quotient? Yeah, so we'll get to that. So that's when you take into account brain size. So for example, a whale has a much bigger brain than we do, but a whale is also much larger. All right, mm. maybe we just- I learn something new every day. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> it's a good one. N nice oh. tinfoil hat Can you stand up for a second, sir? Oh, you're tall. <laughs> More experience. But I know so many dumb tall dudes. <laughs> like, just like oh tons God. of dumb tall dudes. Back there? Yeah. Not you, sir. Yep. The oh, less likely you are to be malnourished. And that's really Boom. what it is. Is Ooh, that wow. uh, if you are. Let's get a short. round of applause for that. Yeah. Very yeah. Good. Maybe we. Anyway, just quickly. How, how tall are you? You could have been six foot, though, if you were fed properly. <laughs> what, so what's the close. reason? We give them away. That's far why, away. Why do they get more nutrients if they're taller? What's the reason? Uh, well, it, usually one of the consequences oh, yeah. of being malnourished is uh, stunted growth. So it's I not see. that you're taller. It's that you're not short. Right. Uh, and so that's, yeah, that's, that's essentially where that comes from. And not getting enough nutrients, especially in the early years, has a detrimental effect on brain development. But a lot of, a lot of short people are not necessarily malnourished, though. Absolutely. <laughs> Which is why it's yeah. on average. It's just average. averages. Yeah, okay. Yeah. You take 100,000 people, I'm and again, the, the, the correlation yeah. is small. I'm happy you're defending I mean, I'm 5'5". Five five. Yeah. I'm like average, but <laughs> like, you know. So yeah, but again, th these correlations are over yeah. the course of 100,000 individuals. Right, so, right, okay. you know, that's where, and the moder and it's very, mu it's small, right? You know, it's not like you can take two people from this audience and on the basis of their height predict their IQ. But if you took a hundred people, can we try? I see this, you know, this guy in my, my peripheral and it's just annoy annoying the fuck out of me. Can yeah. yeah, he's he's <laughs> tall and he looks pretty it's dumb. A, it's, a good, it's a good, it's a good, it's a good timing to transition right, to the next yeah. <laughs> slide. Yeah, so, so this is what we were talking about, the sort of encephalization quotient, right? Which is that like we can't just compare ourselves to whales or elephants because then they would have much bigger brains than us, and well, that wouldn't make any sense. Ba -bar. B so body body mass is on the x-axis on the bottom. And, and brain, brain mass is brain on, mass is on the water. So, so a centaur right here is heavier, <laughs> uh, but about as about as you know, <laughs> heavy of a brain. The bar as right there. 
Yeah, so we humans have been looking for ways in which we can um, ensure that we are special uh, for a long time. And according to you know this graph, yeah, the bigger you are, the bigger your brain, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you're more intelligent. So, you know, um, but uh, it's another place where Susanna Herculano Huzel uh, did her thing, where she showed that uh, um, in certain species, like rodents, for example, the bigger you get, the bigger your neurons. So just like a rat's feet are bigger than a mouse's feet, a rat's neurons are bigger than a mouse's neurons. That's not true in primates. Mm -hmm. What you get is a more bigger density of neurons. You have more neurons in the primate species. So that's why we have this sort of difference in terms of um, you know, our, our, our brain size and as we get bigger. But, but the question is, is out of all primates, gorillas are the biggest. Why don't they have bigger brains than humans? Oh, there we go. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I ask that question all the time. It's a dumb question, don't you think? <laughs> What's intelligence? Yeah. yeah. Are, you, are you suggesting it's an that a gorilla? Question. Yeah, it was a it smart. It's an intelligence oh, yeah, question. Oh, yeah, well, I, I believe that's uh, he's five ten, I believe. So. Oh. Wait, maybe uh. we have. Do we have an answer for what is intelligence? Yeah. So intelligence is obviously hard to measure. Uh, it can often be culturally specific, uh, and so we can measure different m intelligence in a number of different ways. Um, here, I'm broadly talking about you know sort of. I guess what we can all agree to be G, which is sort of general intelligence. Uh, we, we can talk about different tasks that you know, can access G, but essentially it's a common denominator across a number of tasks that people can be measured in terms of intelligence, and G seems to be a common factor, although there's some debate as to how robust the idea of G is. Okay, people agree on G? They can find the G? Um, some people can find the G. I mean, I've never yeah. found the G. Oh my gosh, <laughs> had to make it about that, Kevin. I'm sorry. I um, about what? General G. Uh, I forget what First I was time I've heard of the G. <laughs> myself. Oh my gosh. Men, right? No. Yeah, um, gosh. <laughs> sandwich right here. I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah nice. that's, I'm like, um, it's like a Weinstein does, couch. Doesn't that have to do with like speed of information processing and like. So yeah, that's, well, that's one measure. Okay. Uh, so, so we can divide intelligence into fluid and crystallized. Crystallized intelligence is uh, what we think of generally as wisdom, so accumulation of knowledge, and that actually continues to grow as we age. Like that guy from Fluid, Lord, like that guy from Lord yeah. of the Rings. <laughs> yeah. He's wise. Exactly. <laughs> you know the one I'm talking about? You know, yeah. Fluid intelligence, which is Grind largely dependent brain. on speed of processing that okay. declines after age about 35. Oh, mm. shit, I'm 33. Intelligent uh, <laughs> you got two more years. <laughs> intelligent fluid. fluid. Let's You're talk right. about it. Uh, that was stupid. Gross. <laughs> These guys are gross. I can't. Uh, th there was, there was that a was so dumb. <laughs> There was, was a great good, slide right. that, um, that, that was in your deck that I had seen something similar to before, which is that cognition peaks at around 23 and then slowly decreases over time. Yeah. But I was being kind at 35. <laughs> no, <laughs> you're yeah. Yeah. below that but age. Which, which and, and then what was really cool, though, is that I, I had always thought that, okay, yeah, sure, 23, and then you just decrease over time. Wow, sad. But you w pointed out that your overall understanding of the world, having worldly knowledge, slowly increases over the period of your entire life. So even though things like your working memory um, and your um, um, attention and that kind of stuff do decrease, uh, interesting thing, interestingly enough, there you go, your world knowledge increases over so time. So like I hey found that, I agree, that the more time I spend on the planet, the more I learn. Yeah. Wow. Exactly. I, I agree. Can we get that on like... Can we address the scale issue of this chart right here? Sure. Anyway, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, that fish is pretty large compared yeah, to... It's just off scale. Yeah, yeah, no, totally. It, it's a log scale, exactly. Yeah. They, 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 purposely, they purposely made it so that it would fit the way that it does. Got it. All right. Duh. <laughs> Did you have anything else that you wanted to mention about um, cognition over lifespan or related um, to mass? I just, I just wanted to talk to about gorillas a little bit more. Yeah, let's and why are we living in a planet of the apes? Um, and the answer is... Oh, this it's is a great a movie. Th question. Th this is... Uh, which um, No, I don't, think we, I don't think we go there. We don't go there? We, we uh, no, I don't think we do I go there. I used to there. use notes. Uh, <laughs> It's all ripping this yeah, guy. Yeah, we're going to go there. We'll, we'll get there. We'll talk to that later about that. Okay, later. so, but yeah. you're basically saying, so, in a certain sense, you know, our crystallized knowledge replaces our slowly declined fluid yeah, knowledge. Yeah, and also and we and report and being utility. happier. That's another thing. There are more positive emotions as you get older, especially after really? middle age. So, you know, the 40s and 50s kind of suck, and then after you're that, you actually get. Age is that true? No, 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 no. Don't <laughs> listen to her. It's getting worse. It gets <laughs> worse. <laughs> it gets worse. You get tinnitus. Everything bothers you. Yes. 
But then once you everything accept fucking it, sucks, you know, the older you get. And then you're like, ah, oh, I should have invested in real estate, and it's just bad. Yes, yeah, so I think about that all the time. You guys have a shit road ahead of you. Uh, should we just end the show right now, then? What? Should we just end the show? What? Just end, end the show. show. I think we just concluded. I think that was a nice. Did we end the show just now? Yeah. Do what? G, the G, G factor stands for grumpy. That was grumpy that's factor. fantastic. Can I write that? Can I have that? <laughs> On we go to the next question. Right. Next question. So, um, so as you mentioned, like, how do we measure intelligence? It's a hard thing to, to measure, right? Uh, and we can't always agree on what, what is intelligence. But if you asked everybody in this room who is the most intelligent person that ever a Jew. lived... A Jew. Um, <laughs> a number of you uh, would probably say Einstein. Not all of you, but some of you would say Einstein, and probably he'd be the most popular choice um, out of everyone. After you know. Donald Trump. Yeah. Of and, course. And, they'd be, and they'd be wrong, right? They'd be wrong. <laughs> Well, it depends on how you measure intelligence. No, does anyone have a different answer? I'm he just curious. Discover, he did uh, discover relativity. All right, we have, yeah, he's, he's we have like an answer. Really <laughs> smart guy. Yeah. All right, we have an answer. Who do you think? Is it, is it that he had more connections between his left hemisphere and his right hemisphere? So as people, people sometimes think that, that he had more connections between the left and the right hemisphere, that um, the corpus callosum, which is the fiber track that connects the two hemispheres, was denser? Uh, no. No. The answer right. is his mom had a huge birth canal. <laughs> <laughs> Was it super wide? <laughs> Another answer. It was atomic. Oh, wow. He had more gray matter. What? Uh, did he have more gray matter? So gray matter is cell bodies uh, as opposed to white matter, which is tracts. And the answer is no. Every oh. picture of him is in black and white. It's a good guess. Wait, was it me? <laughs> um, deeper eye. Deeper sulci? I can't remember. Sure, just, just say it. Everything like that. Deeper valleys yes. and bigger mountains? Yeah. Nope. Yeah, more glial cells or whatever they more glial yeah. cells? Yeah. No. He was a Jew. No. That's why. <laughs> more, syn and more synapses? I'm gonna guess. Hi, Hi Andre. <laughs> um, does it have to do with his ability to problem solve? Like where he would like hold balls in his hands and fall asleep and then they'd like rattle and he'd wake up in semi consciousness and like discover I hold my balls. Maybe. Ball asleep. Could but he um, eject like really well? <laughs> I don't was know. he a big jank? He did they don't that. Rattle, though. Yeah, but we're, we're give your we're kids balls. It's supposed to be a comedy show, right? I don't know. Yeah, an anatomy. I'm not sure. Talking, talking about anatomy. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Can it be a more cell connection? <laughs> more cell connection, so more synapses? Nope. One did he have two brains have in there? An Is there an extra brain one? hidden back? Uh, no. Yeah, he does. <laughs> uh huh. Uh, did he somehow massage it with music because he played piano? Oh. <laughs> did he? <laughs> yes. Wow. Uh, Mozart uh, nope. for the brain. Yeah, I like that. He massaged it with music. Does anyone remember the question? Nothing. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, thank you. Nothing. I feel like an idiot. What's the answer up there? Nothing different. Eureka! Ooh! <laughs> bing, 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 oh, bing, 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 Oh my the gosh! Hardest, hardest How could you guys so not far? know that? There's nothing different. Boom. Well, then it's not anatomical. It's so maybe he wasn't so smart after all. Oh nothing at all. Welcome. What He's is your same name? Same as all of us. Now, do you know a lot about Einstein or the brain, or how did you um, did you come up with that answer? Enough guesses. Okay, that's always a good one. It's very Her brain good. is no different than yours. And is Einstein the smartest person you would have uh, offered up as a choice? That's probably what I would. Are you? Do you like Einstein? Do you like a miniature finger puppet, Einstein? Oh! You do? Why don't you put it on? What kind of a psychopath wouldn't like Einstein, though? Like, would I love him. I Look love at him. that. I'm a big fan. That's amazing. Now, ha have you ever fingered a genius before? No. Now is your chance. Give it up for her. A round of applause. Nice. Kevin, I got it. His man. prostate that, was that a That was different. a good one. That's you a good you one. had that one lined up. Oh, no, I locked and loaded. Have you? Uh, I, I finger geniuses. It's nice. You think oh, that's good to know. It's nice. That's TMI. <laughs> so, um, what are you doing up so there? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, interestingly enough, uh, Einstein asked for his body to be cremated, and we have to assume that included his dick. brain. But the pathologist who was in charge of it couldn't bring himself to do this, so he put the brain in a jar and left it there for like a long time, several decades, until finally they decided, well, we've got to do something with it, and we can't just throw it away. So they started looking at it, and they e sliced Eagles it up. E-Eagles MC Gross. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Um, 
<laughs> you know, the truth is there's a bunch of papers that are published out there showing small differences in different regions when you compare to, you know, who do you compare Einstein to? Most of them are compared to, you know, postmortem John Van Neumann. <laughs> brains of uh, oh. VA people because, you know, that's oh. who we can get brains from at oh. the same yeah, time yeah. period. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. In the oh, that would be really important. VA You're right. The same time the period. Veteran, is yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Administration, yeah. So they have to come to the same time period, have to be about the same age, et cetera, et cetera. And so, I mean, they don't have to, not, not that they were alive the same age as, I mean, they have to be the same age as Einstein was when he died. Not Anyway. Interestingly right. uh, enough, wouldn't it also be potentially true that people that live in, let's say, the 50s and 60s, or whatever, the 20s, 30s, whatever time period it may have been prior to this explosion in technology, maybe they actually had more connections of regarding the Earth and regarding the cosmos, regarding uh, understanding of human behavior and human connection than we do now from being attached to our cell phones and computers. Yeah, maybe Google hadn't ruined their brain yet. <laughs> maybe yeah. it's I just... I agree, yeah. it's all relative. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a hot take. Maybe it's just his, like his, that was so his hair. Bad choice. Yeah. I think his hair. If like, he shaved his head, he'd be <laughs> down with the rock. But he's got this amazing, you know, <laughs> scientist hair. But yeah, the truth is, is that we can't come to a consensus. And sometimes you say, oh, it's because in this one little region you have more glial cells than neurons, but then that's also a sign of, like, in an, or in another place they'll say, well, there's just more, less density, or there's more sort of cortical thinning, and maybe that means the neurons are closer together, but that's also used to explain that he had dyslexia, which we don't even isn't know. Isn't the had. real blah, answer, blah, is blah, everyone blah. thinks he's smart because we're told he is? You know, like Stephen um, Hawking. Like, how the fuck do we know, right? I mean, most <laughs> people don't know how smart that dude is. Everyone says how smart he is. We just believe it. How well do you know, really? He came up with some pretty amazing thoughts. Yeah. Which, you know, Einstein or Stephen Hawking? Einstein. Einstein. Nah, Einstein. Yeah. Yeah. Have something to do with his... Like, he obviously had... He looked crazy. Uh, ...creativity for him to come yeah, up with I mean, a special in general I don't know. relativity. That's, there's and also one involved. that continues to be proven true, yeah. you know, decades later. And How many people really understand that, though? They're just told. <laughs> anyway, yeah, you? Ah. <laughs> 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 What it's part of the brain is that? Is what she said. <laughs> the divine inspiration. Well, part. actually, the right temporal lobe is where religiosity resides. Oh. So, you know. Does anyone here have that activated of late? <laughs> I <laughs> bet not. Mine shut off a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> not not San Francisco. <laughs> oh, you did. That's good to know. You Name tell me everyone in here is an atheist? Let's, let's yeah, touch on that. Yeah, if you stimulate the right temporal lobe, people can report having spiritual experiences. Really? Like, Interesting. You know, seeing visions and, yeah. Wow. Can we... Uh, similarly, yeah. I and mean, it's not distinct. It's not, you know, limited to the right. Temple. My theory the is that he didn't have the same blockages that most people have. That's my theory. Mm -mm. You know what a blockage like is? Like gastrointestinal? Or, or no, I don't know. Do you, are you, are you <laughs> saying he like was never constipated? What do you? Say? I'm just saying that uh, if you're saying his brain isn't any different than anyone else's, uh, what's different about it? Well, maybe it's uh, free of some of the same blockages that most people are. Probably yeah. Occam's or razor, the simplest solution is probably right. So um, where most people probably sat around and ate food and played games on the streets, which is great to do, great to pass your time, this guy contemplated the universe and did math and physics in his free time. Simplest solution. I heard yeah. he did a lot of pull-ups, too. Ripped. Yeah, exactly. Actually, that's an interesting point, which we're, we're actually good. Perfect segue. Let's go to the next question. <laughs> All right. So the next question is, do adult brains grow new neurons? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, now specifics. specifics. All right, raise your hand if you have some specifics here. Where is it? Where are they grown? Is it like the skin, which regenerates every seven years or so? All right, we have an answer. Well, I think they do connect. They get, they get new connection, but they don't grow from the beginning new. Yeah, so that's a good good point. She, the, uh, the, the answer given here is that they might form new connections, but they don't actually grow new neurons. And it for... Is that enough for a eureka? Uh, no, okay. I don't think so. Oh. Okay, good, 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 good point. All right, hold on, we have another answer. So we have some progenitors of neurons that can also product glia and microglia cells and neurons. I think we're looking for a yes or no answer. <laughs> no, there's, there's got to be a why, I right? I thought, can't the hip, hip, I hate to bring up the hippocampus again, but doesn't that grow Julia, new neurons? Julia, you know your hippocampus. Yes, Damn. hippocampus doesn't that grow new neurons? one part of the brain okay. that grows new neurons. Okay. The hippocampus? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that? Wasn't that funny? <laughs> All right, so, okay, so we've given that. So should, what should we do then? Give another part of the brain that so uh, is the related? The question is, is the hippocampus the only part of the brain that grows new neurons, or 
are there other parts of the brain that grow new neurons? All right, who we have an answer? Is it also the amygdala? No. <sighs> amygdala. Good word. Amygdala. All right, we have another Peter answer up here. Good word. It is. So yeah, the can is it just the hippocampus? It's probably one of the lobes. One yeah. of the lobes. Yeah. All right, okay. one second. We we have an uh, answer. Got right behind the ear, maybe. I'm just going to throw out their frontal lobe because that's the only part of the frontal brain lobe. I know. Frontal lobe. Frontal lobe. And no, uh, stab in the lobe. dark. All right, pass that back. Uh, that's good. I, we'll but you said it with such a great accent. I, we should yeah, he sounded yeah. smart. Yeah. Yeah. About the skull. <laughs> hey. We haven't had an answer from here yet. I think they grow in the skull and then they just kind of see. Cerebellum? No. Nope. Nope. Anyone else have a word about nope. the brain they've heard before? <laughs> Cranium? Cerebral cortex? <laughs> the elbow part? Uh, no. Nope. I thought that was right. It's still a subcortical structure. No. No. Okay. All right. Well, who got it? Uh, okay. One more. All right. Is, there, here we is go. there another part of the limbic system that, that? How uh, how about the brainstem? The brainstem. No. 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 How about the anus? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just want to say this word. Thank you. It's funny. The medulla you oblongata. Are. What is it? Medulla oblongata. No. The brain is who All said right, that. You're awesome. No, they're okay. Do we have You're awesome. Do we have a best answer? We do, didn't. Wasn't one of the answers. Is, is it only in the hippocampus <laughs> and nowhere else? <laughs> is it only? Uh, so there's one other place, uh, but I think progenitor cells is probably the best answer. Okay. Uh, yeah, all right. So they got it. Up. Yeah. Where, where, uh, was, where was that? Uh, yeah, right, right there. Yep. All right. Let's go. Eureka. Eureka. Come on down. Eureka! Woo! Woo! We're going to find out. So the final answer is the only other part of the brain in the human is in the basal ganglia. And both oh of these shit. two regions are involved in learning new long-term things. Mm. And the new neurons are only around... Well, this is like the answer to the question, which I think okay. is next. Okay, so like, right? yeah. welcome. And what is your name? The basal Hiliana. ganglia and hippocampus. Hiliana, all right. And so wh what was your exact answer? you want to repeat it one more time? Uh, we have progenitors that can produce cilia and neurons. I would have. I was thinking the exact same thing. It's amazing. Nietzsche Thai uh, has the best basal ganglia. If you guys have get a chance, I haven't tried that. I usually go to Osha. Nietzsche Thai. Osha Thai is yeah, good Osha's too. Yeah, Osha good as well. Fantastic uh, basal ganglia. Oh, okay, that's great. Now, as you mentioned, we we grow new neurons because we learn new skills. Uh, do you do you uh, do you have hobbies? Do you learn anything new? Go down. Just go down. Well, guess what? <laughs> we we want to increase your brain neurons, so we have gotten you juggling balls. Oh. Juggling balls. Look at, these. Look at these sweet balls. Balls grow neurons, too. Yeah, balls can help grow neurons. So now you can learn to juggle, and you can grow a couple neurons. Wait, wait, They're diverse we, balls. We you want, you want to give it a shot? You want to try it right now? What's that say in her back? LPB. Oh! oh yeah. That was like four neurons right there. Just started just firing away. Frontal, Round of applause. The frontal lobe in action right there. Good job. That was good. Well, that wasn't that very good. It wasn't good. All right. Yeah. So the truth is is that for a long time, we didn't believe that there would be new neurons in the brain in adulthood because wouldn't that just defeat the purpose of experience if those neurons get replaced, right? So even though the data were pretty strong that we do have new neurons, and one of the ways we found out is by looking at radioactivity uh, in the brains of people, to st and you can track you know, how like after a big radioactive event like Chernobyl, for example, you can see whether the neurons in you know, people that our certain ages have more or less of that radioactivity in their brains, kind of amazing to measure. Um, anyway, so we found out that yes, in fact, there are new neurons in these two regions of the brain uh, that are involved in encoding new long-term memories. And so uh, the key thing though is in order to make, oh, so uh, yeah, oh, you do have the medulla oblongata there. Oh yeah, there it is. Um, mm -hmm. Anyway, the um, irony of this picture, of course, is that you can't actually see this cortical structure. Correct, exactly, but, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So the, uh, the hippocampus so is like in here, if it you like. In, in the center. Yeah, like it's like in the middle of the brain and then the basal ganglia are sort of in the middle of the brain there too. Um, and anyway, the, the way that you want to grow your new neurons is actually through cardiovascular exercise. That's a trigger for neurogenesis. Um, at least we know that in rodents. We, we see some neurogenesis Fucking evidence, love genesis. Uh, through exercise. In I'm talking about Peter Gabriel like years or? But yeah. Um, think about it. Think about how you feel. Who here? Who here exercises? Yeah. How about when you uh, finish exercising? How do you feel? Amazing. Like you have new neurons. Like, you're oh, tired. Yeah. But so does, it, uh, does it feel good? Do you feel strong? Yeah. Calm yeah. Down. 
So, so, in, so, a, so afterward, with all this blood flowing, your cognition is strong. If you choose to go and learn, you're going to end up... So the important thing is that if you, you know, do a bunch of exercise and grow those new neurons and then do nothing, those new neurons don't get incorporated into the brain. Uh, they you know, don't get used. Huh. But if you try to learn a new skill, like, for example, juggling, you're welcome... Uh, then you actually incorporate those no neurons and they get you know, used for the encoding of that new skill or that new fact, uh, whatever it is that you're trying to learn. You to right after you exercise. So, yeah, I mean, should right you like jog while juggling? Would that increase it even more? <laughs> I mean, most of this That's work has to be physical. Rats, but, so um, and you have to do something physical, though? This well, also what about playing chess? Can I just watch Family Feud? Yeah, playing chess is great. You can do yeah. something intellectual. Mm. Yeah, so intellectual. Family Feud, then. So, so yeah. does this also has to have to do with the amount of oxygen that is running through our body that's still hearts beating strong and we're in a state of peak in terms of our body and our energy? Yeah, so probably, uh, because exercise is one thing that can really help cognition, especially as we get older, and especially even if we have cognitive decline. Uh, exercise is about as good as any drug we have on the market. But don't be lazy. Cardio, I I cardio. What if you just make what a point if you just to lift put it? to uh, put a puzzle Nerds together Nerds while I'm uh, making love? I mean, what? you know, in most of these cases, right their cardio activity is walking. You know, these mm. are people who uh, are uh, yeah, not, but that's hard. You know, like walking at age of seventy. Tonight, it was <laughs> yeah. Felt it. What yeah. about oh. question right here? Uh, no, Jesus I don't think you're in decline. Wow. You're willing to eat a placenta. You are roaring. 84, this woman. Th that's over. That, that, that's when <laughs> I was younger. But uh, <laughs> no. Wow. Well, the good old days. Wannabe, wannabe. wannabe. But uh, no, I, it's langu languages, learning new languages. Yep. Would not not great, great idea, great skill, great, I've, great I've way. I found yeah, and I went yeah. back to you know enhance my French a few years ago. And well, the seats hurt my ass, you know. But the uh, body mouth but over here. Yeah, French you know, seats. Those little school yeah. desks they put you in, uh, <laughs> uh, and night classes. I'm too oh. old. Mm -hmm. But but the other thing was, um, I was so much better at French. And then uh, some twenty some years ago, thirty years ago, I learned Spanish, and I already spoke some French and some mm -hmm. Italian. But um, you know. I can remember that stuff better than I can remember where the hell I left my keys. Mm -hmm. oh. Wow. Wow. Yeah, different right. different you know memory systems. And I yeah. think you should. <laughs> and, you know, part of that reason yeah. is that, you know, you've left your keys so often. You have so many traces of leaving your keys that your brain doesn't give a shit anymore. You should French. get some French keys. That's a good point. <laughs> Those really work. Yeah. <laughs> get some fr I have some French ones. They're very good. They're a little naughty, yeah. but yeah. and there's also there's also oh. tricks that you can do in order to actually learn better. So um, doing things like studying French for an hour a day is probably not going to help you learn French as fast as moving to. There you go. Um, and there's other things like neurogenesis comes w assisted with cardiovascular exercise. This is I wanted to ask you a question because we had a cerebral cortex up here. You're chatting right now. Yes, uh -huh. cerebral cortex was your answer, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so I am um, that that <coughs> that was um, I was reading the Scientific American and I was looking through some of the research that was showing that that this the cerebral cortex is now they're th thinking that that is an area where we end up storing some of our new um, neural oh connections. Yeah, all and of our yeah, yeah, no, for sure. So that's the cerebral cortex. So if you think about the brain like an ice cream cone, which I do because I love the brain. This is like a yummy um, ice cream cone. Yeah. It's what kid would want to eat this? Right? I'll take uh, a swirl. You got, you got the brain stem is your cone, right? Then you have like this one first little bonus scoop. Why don't, uh, we, why don't we go ahead and explain the, um, the, uh, the part of the brain that you're talking about, which the reptilian oh. or right, the, yeah. uh, just go, go, go super, let's go super basic on the way up. From from the reptilian from the up, yeah, from the brainstem okay. up to cerebral cortex. This is okay. a human just brain, right? Just do some quick. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I no, hate the reptilian the brain thing, though. You don't like calling I it the reptilian like brain. I don't like that. Well, you call it subcortical. Yeah, subcortical. So, okay, so subcortical. Okay. Yeah. So that well, I was I was getting there. Okay. Right. Perfect. Yeah, so that was the next Ooh, one. a little fight going on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So on top of the cone, inside the that that happens in the ponds, by the way, though. The pond section. Ponds. 
Um, is the inside there is another scoop that you can't see. That's mm. the subcortical, you know, part that I'm talking about. Um, the diencephalon, where you have, you know, basal ganglia, thalamus. You have these subcortical structures, and then the cerebral cortex is the last sort well of. The top amygdala scoop of the brain. is also there, um, and the hippocampus is there. Yeah, so the hippocampus and the amygdala make part of a part of what's called the limbic system, which is the border between the subcortical structures and the cortex, cerebral cortex. What so about the an anterior cingulate cortex? Uh, so yeah, that's part of the. It can't depending on how you define it. Can't smart be part again. Of no, I'm just it's fucking yes. with me. <laughs> uh, so it's inside. Of course, it's it's again uh, sort of a phylogenetically older structure compared with the oh. outside. You know, really super folded cortex. And and yeah. so okay so then we have a cerebral cortex which is this um, th th this is the most developed uh, area of our human body well I guess the prefrontals f even more so but c go ahead and why don't can we go a little um, occipital what does occipital mean oh uh, and then I mean go parietal the temporal uh, frontal yeah. uh, okay so um, okay so moving so, so the brainstem is vital functions if you uh, you know, th th these are non-survivable injuries. So the last place you want a brain tumor is in the brainstem. That's really, really bad. Um, as you go up, uh, you get more and more complex function. Uh, so you go from vital, vital reflexes. Cerebellum is really interesting because it has these like special types of neurons that um, can be involved in fine tuning of movements and precise aim. Wow. Um, so and then one giant you know, yeah, scrotum, you get, isn't it? You go into these. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Subcortical structures. So the cerebellum looks like a giant scrotum. That might Actually, be that's basically it. That might be a line of the night. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what to say. How many about scrotums that? have you seen, Kevin? Uh, um, one and a half. <laughs> uh, but yes, yeah, so then you have the lobes. They all have different. So functions. hungry. There's, you know. All right. Yeah, uh, many, many different elements. All right. Um, all right. I, can I, have we a, I have a question. Go. Um, sure. Which part? Which structure of the brain? causes me to want to sleep with much younger guys. Gyri and sulci. Gyri and sulci. And so that's where all, that's where the surface area increases. We were talking about that earlier. So you see all these little folds. Can you maybe talk about that yeah, a little? Yeah, sure. So in fact, most people look at this brain and they think, oh, I can just draw a brain. It just got a jumble of lines on it. But actually, everybody's brain looks exactly like this. Wow. Like, you know, inferior, middle, temporal gyrus. Everybody's brain has exactly these landmarks. Central sulcus, lateral sulcus. Uh, you know, it, all of these landmarks, the angular gyrus, you've got, like, they all look the same on everybody's brain. It is totally not random, which I think people are really... Yeah, where's the I best place to get a tumor, though? Where's, like, the best place? <laughs> 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 um, so, yeah, yeah, I mean, if, yeah, What's I think that's a question that's going to be... I'm going to wait until the end. To okay, the best place to get a tumor, <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, so that's, that's part of it. The thing that I think that we sometimes focus in on is the fact that all of these different brain regions have different functions, but that loses the thing that these are all interconnected. And that, you know, we used to think of that we, we sway in neuroscience between, you know, a very modular view of the brain. Oh, look, if you damage this part, then you get this effect. If you stimulate this part, then you have this very specific action. Um, to, you know, actually the brain is equipotential, which means that every part of it is like equally important. And the truth is, is that it's somewhere in between. We have so many connections between neurons and the functionality is in how these uh, different brain regions interact. And the reason I don't like the reptilian brain thing is because our subcortical structures have continued to evolve just like the rest of our brain. So my basal ganglia is nothing like the basal ganglia of a reptile. Duh, yeah, absolutely. I've said that so I many times. I totally support you. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's move on. Um, <laughs> well, I kind of I yep. wanted to take the most time <laughs> on the section, but sure, oh. go ahead. Okay. That's fine. Let's go to the next question. Okay. So Could maybe, maybe just, just quick, though, I don't know if we'll actually get to gray matter, and I, I, want, I, wanted oh, okay. to, I wanted to at least touch on that a little bit. We did just a very, very tiny amount, but can we, let's just go back really quick just so we can show, <laughs> show that. Um, yeah, everyone loves that noise. It's awesome. <coughs> This, this, okay. brain is, this brain is a Patriots fan. That's, yeah. Central sulcus That's a very good no. point. Yeah. Elephant and donkey. Yeah, no. So, so in, yeah. Indra, let's although, let's although may, maybe we could see it that way because basically sen the central sulcus is the major division between the front and the back of the brain, and the front of the brain is all about action, and the back of the brain is all about perception. That's pretty cool. So I guess you can kind of maybe map that onto political parties, but um, uh. yeah, this is your somatosensory cortex, which is you know how you feel different parts of your body, and this is your motor cortex, which is how you control those different parts of the body. 
And so, um, feeling and control, so definitely red and blue. Yep. It's interesting. Executive function and then perception. Feeling so versus control. There feelings it is. and control. So, um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so let's deep. let's quit very quickly where we were talking about all the folds and the cortex area. So we we had a slide with the cross section. We don't actually a cross sectional slice of the brain. If you were to actually put like a, a disc into the brain and pull it out, you would see a cross section of it. And so a majority of the gray matter is located around that cortex area by these folds and white matter is located further down uh, the down center. the folds to the center. So maybe explain, so you were saying earlier, gray matter is what, white matter is what, and why is this significant? Yeah, so gray matter is where the cell bodies are and the dendrites, which is the rece receiving parts of neurons, and then the white matter is where they send their tracks. So that's what you don't see. When you look at these folded surface, you see, oh, look, there's all this surface area where all the cells are and all the dendrites are, and that's really interesting. But what you don't see is everything inside of that is white matter, which which means those neurons are sending connections to different parts of the brain. And in fact, that's what we realize is really particularly important uh, because brain regions don't act uh, as islands. They communicate with each other and that's how we get all these wonderful functions. I mean, we have emotions just like uh, a lot of other animals, but we also have a prefrontal cortex that allows us to decide whether we want to act on those emotions. So even when we say, look, we all, are, we all have implicit biases, our brains are sort of born to categorize, right? We want to figure out, we want to make sense of a chaotic world, and yet we have a prefrontal cortex, so we don't need to act on those implicit biases. We can recognize them, and we can even do something about it. But isn't it funner just to act on them? Am I wrong? Funner oh, nope. for you, maybe, <laughs> but not for the actee. Oh, the very actual. true. Next time your girlfriend or boyfriend's being hyper emotional, just say, damn, you have an underdeveloped prefrontal cortex. Uh, yep. Mm, all right. All right now let's win move the argument. On. All right, here we go. <laughs> Good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, how much does a baby's brain grow in size in the first year? So, between birth and 12 months. All right, hold on. We have some answers. Where was that? Hmm? Yeah. 33%. 33%? 33%? No. <laughs> How close is that? Not close at all. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, not close at all. Shut down. <laughs> all right, ho hold on a second. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, okay. All right. Doubles in size. Doubles. Uh, no. Wow, right, doubles. Hold on. Wow. Where was. 200%. Uh, no, that would That's be the same. That's the same as doubling. Yeah. <laughs> Over here. Are you sure? Not a bit. <laughs> Nothing? Um, nope. Actually, that's not good. 400 percent. 400? 400? Uh, now too much on the other direction. I think 300 percent. 300 is All right. 300 percent. Eureka! All right. Come on up. Come on up. Come on down. So at 300 percent. So yeah. the average uh, brain triples in size wow. between 0 and 12 months. The average brain. All right, how you doing, my man? Boom. What's your name? Michael. Michael. What? Oh. <laughs> okay. All right, but <laughs> thanks for applying your neurons. But now he he's gonna get the prize. Uh, all right. Did, did you, was that just a, a guess, or did you happen to know that, or did you study that? Or? I might have heard that somewhere, but that 300% just sort of popped in my brain. Popped in your brain. Yeah, makes sense. Right. And you got okay. And were you uh, just, were you a okay, smart? Just to baby? clarify, it's triples. Okay, yeah, we got triples. it. It's triples. triples. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah. We got it. Were you? Were Fuck <laughs> the percentages. <laughs> triples. Awesome. All right. Okay, great. Uh, were you a smart baby? Do you, do you know? Do your parents would really tell you? Oh, you're you're such a smart baby growing up. You know, I don't remember if I was smart. All as parents a baby. think their babies are okay. smart. Well, we just assume you, you are. And, and the gift we have for you, we were talking about different parts of the brain. In case you forgot some of them. You can actually display this amazing diagram right here that has, oh. Boom. Look at this. How useful this will be on your Muni ride, huh? <laughs> Would you ever actually use this? I, I might. When people try to tell me they're smarter than me, I might say, well, okay. Here's okay, you're going to point to things and make stuff up. That's this what I do. This is a great thing to whip out when you're in social circles and be like, by the way, that's this part of Let's not talk about whipping okay. anything out in social circles. Yeah, that, okay. those days are over. Give them a round of applause, Good everybody. Woo! Good job, buddy. Yep. It's right. a map of the tenderloin so is what that is. So, so we're talking it triples in size over one year. Yeah, it triples in size over one year. And then I think the cool thing is, is that between age one and age 21, 
the only there's only a 20 percent difference right so you only get like you go from you know a thousand to 1200 or 1400 grams depending on you know where you are in there but but the difference in size of the brain uh, you know is is much smaller compared with what happens in that first year of life cool segue uh, yeah. so it's massive this I believe is gestation so this is the fetal brain ah it is oh brain. this is oh that's correct that's <laughs> not that's <laughs> not um, that's not post birth <laughs> <laughs> okay which does grow very quickly so, okay so um what so what is the significance of it tripling in size in the first year why does it just is it is it just because oh my god I'm Perception, everything is so unique. And yeah, I mean, I think, you know, obviously, yeah, that's that's a lot of, there's is a huge it like the breast milk that's, um, like, really yummy and, like, powerful? And you just want to talk about breast milk. Or right? the uh -huh. formula. Whatever or formula. You know, or formula, best, yeah. Right? So, um, yeah, I mean, you know, uh, as the baby develops, as the baby encounters the world, that's when you get, you know, a lot of this neural growth and, you know, this tripling in size. And, yeah, and I, mean, I mean, I think you, you know, the, 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 it seems like the, fe the key feature is that in order for those neurons to become incorporated into the brain, there needs to be this experience, and so that's why you're, you know, outside. Okay. Room, so what happens when, say, like a, a child's growing up and they're, you know, unfortunately they're locked in the closet or something? They, they don't have much stimuli. Yeah, so, so there are critical periods and sensitive periods in development. Critical periods are periods of time in which if you don't get the stimulation you need, say, for example, language development, uh, then your brain will never be able to uh, do that particular thing. Uh, sensitive period means it's easier to learn a new language, you know, when you're six, but it's not impossible to learn it at 84. Um, so, so that's sort of the and difference. How long does that last, the sensitive and... Oh, that, I mean, sensitive periods are usually slightly longer than critical periods, but also, again, in childhood. But then, you know, the ability to, to learn the language, you know, is throughout the lifespan, right? So at a certain so point, it's safe to lock them in a closet. It won't really affect their brain growth. Uh... <laughs> Uh, I mean, yeah, it'll uh, affect their. D does brain. anyone okay. in the, does anyone in the audience have a child between the ages of maybe zero and two years old? Wow, this is very Bay Area. Um, uh, all right, <laughs> make some noise if you have a child. That's yours. That's four okay. people out of eighty or something. Uh, um, I mean, not to check that's out your Kevin's kid? basement. Yeah, basically. How many so weeks? <laughs> run experiments on babies. So so, so this is, remember, you guys remember that slide that we showed you um, where um, you made the joke about the carpet, remember? The selection yeah, of carpet. I don't remember my so, jokes. So, uh -huh. yeah. so, so, um, so, so, so similarly here, we saw a massive expansion in terms of the amount of neur neuronal growth until the, age, until the age of about two. And so this has some, does this also have to do with tripling in size through the first year? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and uh, you know, to me though, that the more interesting thing is just that this, you know, the, the change between zero and one, you know, dwarfs the change between you know, and almost any other a and time period. And think about how crucial that time period Politically is for that child right there. to be learning information dwarf. that is important for the, uh, their global perspective. If that child is learning about a global perspective, about like a harmonious culture of civilization, trying to like work together and build a beautiful world, then As the child's they gonna, normally do. That child's going to grow up and become great. But if that child's like fighting and locked in closets and shit like that, we have a mess. So it's, this is a period of time is absolutely crucial for a child development. Bay Area people not going to have kids until they're 40. doesn't matter. All right. So let's um, go. Let's, uh, let, let's go on to the next okay. question. Let's, let's for time wise. All right. So what happens to neurons that don't find meaningful connections? They do stand up. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? All right. Do we, uh, we have some answers? Meaningful connections. What is an answer? All right. Hold on. No, they become Republican. Woo. That makes you a Democrat. What was it? Eureka! All right! Eureka! They die. They die. That's a bummer. sad. All right. Hello, what's your name? Becca. Becca. How did you know that? Do you study the brain? Sort of. I think it's that they leave a show. That's what that's. Okay, college. And so do you do you have meaningful connections in your life? Just want to make sure. Not enough. Uh-oh. Okay, well, you're, you're not going to do anything dramatic, are you? No, not really. All right, well, we have for you a book on networking so you can get, make some more connections, <laughs> hopefully meaningful on multiple levels. Round of applause. Woo! Woo! Eureka! All right, here we go. So, uh, in fact, they commit suicide. Uh, so it's called 
Apoptosis. Wow. Yeah, is, is, that, is, is that the same thing as pruning? Uh, yeah, yes. Although pruning often refers to connections in addition to neurons, so it's a little bit more comprehensive. So let's let's stick to apoptosis. But for neurons dying. Yeah. Apoptosis. Apoptosis. And, and for ner and for neurons pruning. What is I the pr pruning, pruning is sort of a general term of essentially neurons either um, the connections being pruned. You can talk about connect pruning connections, so synaptic pruning, where the synapses that aren't so like aren't firing. You know, a, a single neuron can have ten thousand synapses, right? And maybe like five thousand of them are not doing anything, so those those five thousand kind of wither away, wither and away. then the five thousand that are making connections stick and around. Withering away. But if pruning. there was a neuron that didn't make any connection, gotcha. That's out of there. death. What what if okay, the, what if the neuron's the not s not suicidal, just like really depressed? <laughs> Yeah, so actually I had this idea for a graphic novel about this like the one neuron night. that like would not kill itself. And oh instead wow. it was like trying to hide like from, you know, all of its like and it would like go all over the brain it's and like wreck Trying to get connections, like trying what to be yeah, Is it, it called Justin like Bieber? <laughs> <laughs> What it, that'd that be amazing really if that cool. was like then you made a graphic novel it turned into a movie. That's the idea. Make me rich. That could be amazing. Yeah. And can we can we maybe talk about the opposite quick of, of pruning is uh, ossification? Would that be ossifying connections, strengthening them? I thought that was forming this bone. This guy Googled shit. No? Yeah. Isn't ossification bone forming? I thought no. neurons could also ossificate in that sense. I thought I, I thought ossification wasn't only strictly tied to bone bone growth, but it was just in the synonym would be strengthening. Strengthening. Yeah. Sure. I mean, I, s I, I would uh, yeah I use the word strengthening. Yeah. Okay. So. So there's the old adage, cells that fire together, wire together, cells that fire apart, wire apart. Uh, so cells true. that, that <laughs> fail to link so something true. sink. I can't remember, but you know, okay. not great poetry, but um, you know. Th that, that's actually tremendously important. Um, when you want to become good at something, there's a lot of ways that we, c that we do. We talked about language. Another great way is to pick someone that is really smart in an area, neuroscience for example, and then do things be like, yo, like can I, take you out for a coffee or a lunch or something, and then ask them really solid questions about neuroscience and learn from them. And then that way you'll learn more, get some book recommendations, go and read that book. Don't read the book one chapter uh, per week for 52 weeks, but read the whole book what over a I'm weekend. Sorry, wait, what kind of coffee, though? <laughs> some yeah, clarify. Yeah, yeah, what super kind important. Of Okay. But th this again, firing together, wiring together, learn about neuroscience. You got to go hard in the paint to learn about it. Um, does, yeah, that makes sense. What did you just say? But right. yeah. Hard in the paint, yeah. yeah. We there's a, there's a side the thing, paint. too, though, that like if all of your neurons are connected, then how do you learn a new skill? Is it a use it or lose it principle, right? So um, as you're letting your French language ling languish uh, because you're not using it, you actually do lose vocabulary in particular. That seems to be like the first thing to go um, mm. because you know those neuro the, the neurons that you know represent those words need to be used for something else. Whatever it is that you're spending your time doing. Um, so, so the yeah. Keys. So Remember you, the keys? whatever you're spending your time doing today is what's going to prepare you for what you'll be able to do tomorrow. Uh, so that's why you know. Would that be pruning or death? When term <laughs> Ser seriously, a real question. Yeah. And you, you learn a language and then you stop using it. Is that the, the synapses pruning so or is that neuronal It'll be pruning death? and rewiring, right? Because huh. those synapse syna synapses will now be making connections with other neurons because whatever you're doing is going to be, you know, setting those neurons in sync with each other. Wait, well, what happens to the dead neurons? Is it like, oh, wait, sorry. Just no, that was a dead one right there. Like yeah, they where, where do they, they go exactly? Up. So interestingly enough, one thing that happens while you sleep is that your brain does a lot of cleanup work, a lot of waste disposal. A lot okay. of the byproducts of the reactions Slip that out are the occurring ear. during the day, um, the, the amount of cerebrospinal mm. fluid in your brain uh, goes up by 20% when huh. you're sleeping. Wow. Uh, and only in the deep stages of sleep. So if you don't actually get into the deep stages of sleep, like for example, if you drink too much alcohol, you actually stay in the uh, higher stages of sleep. You never really get super that's deep. That's why it literally kills brain cells it to drink alcohol. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the reasons. Yeah, because and then ultimately you, you get the accumulation of plaques and tangles, which can lead to oh Alzheimer's disease and dementia. And so. You know, lack of sleep is really problematic, and you should all go read my friend Matt Walker's new book called, it's called Why We Sleep. It's out now, booksellers everywhere. Okay. Uh, and it talks Sounds about good. how, you know, this idea that, you know, I'll sleep when I'm dead is actually going to be true because uh, if you don't sleep, you will be dead. I think most okay. of my neurons have died of asphyxia. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh. That's actually a pretty funny joke because neurons need a lot of oxygen. And that's exactly <laughs> why. I, that's exactly why I said <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah, You've sure, just been sure. validated yeah. by uh, neuroscientists. Are we going to have time to talk about consciousness? 
like the no sense of consciousness? Or sure. No? L- yeah. Let's Willpower is that? We have five agenda. more hours. <laughs> but let's get to the well, next question <laughs> then. Exactly. Okay. Um, what circumstances in our evolutionary history led to the exponential increase in brain size in our ancestors? So if you look at the plot of skull Whoops. size to um, our, you know, our anyway, yeah. There's wait, an exponential wait, wait. People, rise. people that haven't happening? answered. Walking. No. Oh. Cooking. Cooking. Uh, Eureka. Eureka. Oh, Eureka. Woo, <laughs> Cooking. Wow. Wow. Yeah, so cooking. Punchline. Took your yeah, took your punchline. I want to know too. There, there's more so stuff which we'll get. Hello. To. What is your name? Hanna. Hanna. Nice to meet you. Do you cook yourself? No, I'm a USF no, I don't. You don't cook. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Now, now, how did you know that answer? Do you study? Uh, listen to podcasts. <laughs> listen to podcasts. That is amazing. But you don't like to cook. Because we have for you the Eat Like a Caveman Paleo Cookbook. <laughs> Boom. Got to get us on that evolutionary track. So maybe you won't use this, but you can, you know, find somebody who might want to make some paleo snacks. Ben, I feel like you have some jokes yep, about yeah, the we're yeah, we're gonna we're gonna talk yep. about the reason. There's your yep. cookbook Boom. that you can't use. Big round of applause. Round of applause. <laughs> All right. So yeah, around the time that uh, our brain started growing exponentially in size, we started living in larger and larger social groups. And there's a nice correlation in primates with larger the group size, the larger the ratio between the neocortex, the newest part of our cortex, as you've been trying to talk about, and I've been ignoring you. I don't know why. Um, uh-huh. and, uh, and the older part of our brain. Um, so that ratio increases with social group size. And in fact, there's like, right now, it seems like there's this magic number of 150. Which Dunbar's is a number. Dun- yes, it's such exactly a cool right. number. Dunbar's number, which is about the number of social connections that we maintain deep connections with. So if you think about how many people would you invite to your wedding, uh, most people, it's somewhere between, you know, 50 and 200, with, you know, an average being around 150. Um, and that's, and, and anyway, so... So Denver's m- number is really interesting, and that's where we have this sort of exponential rise. But the question is, is like what allowed us to fuel this brain? Uh, because as I mentioned before, gorillas have big bodies, but their brains are not as big as ours. And the reason is, is because they're on a raw food diet. Think about how much chewing and foraging you need to do in order to digest enough calories to fuel a, your brain. I and think it's, it was like they spend a quarter of their day just yeah. chewing. I mean, most oh. of their day is spent looking for and chewing foraging food. And oh. chewing. I would love to see it like half a day just chewing. Wouldn't that be nice? They have, they have massive yeah. jaws for that as well in yeah. order to be able to do that. And so, yeah, so we cooked and then... Yeah, we invented fire, which allowed us to get... Uh, or we discovered. We, we don't discovered quite, we don't quite fire, know. Yeah, 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 yeah. sure you're right. Yeah. Uh, we discovered fire, and that allowed us to get uh, a lot of calories uh, without, you know, that much effort. And so we could spend the rest of the time thinking and enjoying culture and teaching ourselves language and music and all the other features of culture, which ultimately led to civilization, and the rest is history. Boom! Okay. Thanks for scaring That us. is awesome. Brains get larger, of course, over the course of a lot of evolution, and you yeah. know, yes, if there was, yeah, I- I- if if it meant that the we brains, the brains of larger apes, have some apes over for dinner, more. find out, yeah, yeah, <laughs> cook them some steak. <laughs> yes, oh yes, yeah, they'll, exactly. they'll start practicing Train your piano apes. and singing. That's the yeah. idea. I'm the neuroscience expert now. Well, it's <laughs> obvious. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I, I know I know we want to um, get to uh, maybe yeah, le- okay fine. Let's just talk about consciousness for a little bit. What are, what p- parts of the right. brain are associated with consciousness? Is a whole brain? Is it lo- is the consciousness even localized in the nervous system of a human, or is it like woo woo spiritually somewhere else? Uh, it's definitely a nervous system because you can alter the nervous system and alter consciousness, and you can you know when there is no nervous system, there's no Snuff consciousness. Snuff it out. There's no mm. evidence that there's consciousness when there's no body. Uh, Really, you need a body. Damn. That was like that was the most binary answer to that question I've ever heard. Like, okay. Well, I mean, look, you know, an anesthesiologist can alter your consciousness by giving you a bunch of drugs. So, you know, if we and and interestingly enough, that actually. Gotta pay him a hell of a lot. My brother's an anesthesiologist. Oh yeah. yeah. You ever get that bill like three months later? Continue to be nice to your brother. (laughs) It's like a set the drugs. Whoa. Yeah, so an- an anesthesiologists have learned, actually, that just because you put someone to sleep, you don't know necessarily that they're unconscious. What if they have locked-in syndrome and they just can't tell you about it? Oh. So anesthesiologists mm. actually don't oh, just put people scary. to sleep. They have this sort of like three-pronged approach. One thing is that they make sure you can't feel. 
right? So they numb you. Oh, that's uh, easy. Yeah. The, the, the second thing is they make sure that you're sedate so that you're not feeling anxious. The third thing is they make sure you don't remember what happened. And they do okay. this that's just by like talking. Is that for liability reasons? Uh, no, it's because they? who wants it's to remember? It's just all explaining yeah. things. <laughs> I mean, you know, well, yeah, I, say, part, I may right. screw up, but you won't remember this. Uh, let's carry yeah, on. So set up tell. a webcam next time. you. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, and maybe, maybe just to piggyback on the consciousness uh, answer a little bit more, you gave a very you know, scientific answer without a nervous system. There is no uh, consciousness. We know that. Yes. How about when does consciousness form? Does it form in the womb? When does consciousness form? That's a really good uh -oh. question. Abortion again, debate. Yeah, I think hmm. <laughs> I think it depends. Uh, don't we call it uh, forced childbirth now? If it's like anyway. This oh is like, uh, okay, what term. do you think? Um, so so uh, you know it depends on your definition of consciousness, of course, which is what we can argue about. That's really what we're arguing about, right? Are we defining consciousness by having a self identity of I am a person and that is uh, you know unique? Are we identifying consciousness with with I can just see and I have the subjective experience of seeing because uh, you know most animals have that? What about the um, kicking that happens, right? Is that know, so that's conscious kicking? Yeah, or is it like I can contemplate my own existence? Is that like that's is that way down the line, right? right? So at what point is there consciousness? And the truth is, is anybody who's had a baby between zero and one watches consciousness come truth. online. Yep. That you yep. know, those first three months, there's no if consciousness. You're, if you're a good parent. <laughs> if you're a good yeah. parent. Okay. Like, you know, there, you may not be watching. That's why we talk about those first three months as the fourth trimester, or I call it the meatloaf stage. I mean, you're essentially taking care yeah, of meatloaf. Like a little guinea so pig or something. Meatloaf? Why are yeah. babies crying so much at one or two months if they're not conscious? Because that's all they can do. That's a, it's a, it's a, but it's they're a not reaction. actually feeling pain or hunger. Who knows? You know I mean, that. again, they might be feeling pain. Does that mean they're conscious? I mean, a cat feels pain. Is a cat conscious? Damn, yeah. So it depends on your definition of consciousness, right? So if you can then dull the pain, and, and you know, does that mean that you don't have consciousness anymore? And let's go to the opposite side then from birth. How about post-death? Uh, again, not scientifically measurable. Um, what happens to this consciousness post-death? Is there a rebirth? What, what is your take on, I, on Yeah, Let's cover that okay. in the next 30 yeah, seconds yeah. that we have left. Well, let's By do the way, let's re do reincarnation. Do Reincarnation. Yes no. What do you think? So I'm a scientist. Hot take. And, uh, okay, but give us so a I'm what's a scientist? There is no evidence that there is anything that consciousness exists out once the body dies. In fact, we can okay. we can we can induce brain death, in which case we would say the person is no longer conscious, even though the body is still alive, right? So, but then again. So, we come so that's a, a maybe. I get no, it. There's okay. no maybe. There's no maybe. No, she says consciousness if, if dies. If you are dead, there is no there's consciousness. Death. Yes. Okay, okay, and okay. we're going to go to Now we're going to ask fight. you a question. Bonus question. Bonus. You've asked us questions bonus. throughout the night. Kevin. Bonus question. If you had to lose functionality, one part of your brain, which part would you choose? So I would actually choose uh, my prefrontal cortex. And let me tell you really? why. Really? Yeah. Wait, why? <laughs> Your executive a, functioning? Because I wouldn't know. I wouldn't have the insight that I had brain wow. damage, and mm. I could do whatever the fuck I wanted. Oh, wow. Oh, I'm yeah. not Damn. So wow. you, just wanna, <laughs> you just want to run around as one of those people on Polk Street that, like, poops in the middle of the street You just need to have a T-shirt. Who cares? Not me. <laughs> wow. You wouldn't. You could oh do that gosh. anyway. I, or you just need to get old enough where you don't give a rat's ass. Yeah. That's the other that option. was impressive. Wow. She came up with an answer right away. You already you've thought about this yeah. already. Wow. Like, I don't wanna, okay, let's do some audience Q and A. We had a yeah. any yeah. last minute final final questions. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I wanted to mention um, earlier uh, we were talking about the slices of Einstein's brain, and if I'm not mistaken, you can see those at the Muter Museum in Philadelphia. Yes, that's right. You can. Uh, I've, certain, I've seen yeah, it. Certain yeah, certain slices. I've yeah. a few of them, too. If you want to come over to my place, i got a couple. Good question. <laughs> Pretty amazing. Question. I actually have All a right, microscope we'll at home uh, that belonged to Arnie Scheibel, who is my neuroanatomy professor, who is one of the people who uh, says You dropped a name. I wonder, like, are there little bits of Einstein in this? Name if, dropper. If, uh, uh, if staying in the womb longer might be, like, good for development, after a C-section, could we just, like, leave it open and become marsupials? That sounds good. You are single, How about right? You be <laughs> the person I do not see first. you with a date right now. You can do whatever you want with the body when you're done with it. I was wondering yeah. what would happen to the size of the brain as you get older, as you age. I understand about the synapses and the neurons and so on, but is there any difference in the physical size of the brain itself? So on average, there you do we do see some atrophy of with age. So the brain does decline in size with age. Um, 
but there's a lot of variability, individual variability. And one, so one of my favorite stories is the story of Sister Mary, uh, who was this nun who lived to be 104, and she was part of something called the Nun Study. And this was a great study because they got to look at you know, these women who had very similar life experiences, no alcohol, you know, no pregnancies, no things that would sort of like make them different or you know, affect their brains. And so they were great ca candidates for looking at differences in brain function and structure and, and how that all works. Sister Mary was like a firecracker. She, you know, she taught math. She was like the she was the first one to sign up to donate her brain, and then every other sister followed. Um, she was incredibly socially active, and so when she died, and they looked at her brain, they were expecting to find this like perfect specimen of brain. It was riddled with plaques and tangles. It had all kinds of Alzheimer's disease pathology. It was smaller than average, and yet all of her cognitive scores, which they had tested her every year, mm. were through the roof. She was an outlier. She always outperformed her peers. And so the truth is, is that you know, even the physicality of it, we still don't understand exactly how the symptoms of Alzheimer's can come from an Alzheimer's-ridden brain, but we know that you can have an Alzheimer's-ridden brain and still, with the things that you do in your life, not show so symptoms. So they, they were looking for healthy cells. They found none. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway. <laughs> okay, one more question. Here we go. All right, so I've got a question. Is When we were talking about neurons <laughs> and strengthening them, is that the same as neural pathways? If so, I've got like a, a further question to that. Yeah, so uh, most people, when they talk about neural pathways, talk about tracts of neurons. And when we're talking about neuron connections, we're talking about synapses. So an, an individual neuron... Um, you know, so yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a population versus a single problem. Okay. So then when we're talking about learning language, one of the things that I got off like a Tim Ferriss podcast was this accelerated learning technique with associating flip cards of images. So an example I'll give is like the word for, for cow in Spanish is vaca and it, or V-A-C-A and it gives you a photo of a cow with like a vacuum cleaner head shitting out grass and it's like vaca, cow. And like that has stuck in my head and every word I associate with an image stays in my long-term memory some her uh, voice is beautiful uh, uh how much time do i have we're like out take, of time. take a minute take a minute it's two fine. stanzas two minutes. it's fine yeah okay just the first act of an opera three hours <laughs> okay well um all right so i'll sing something then that uh will should be familiar to a lot of you and familiarity breeds question uh so i'm going to sing to you this so true is it about vacuums i'll remember it better if it's about okay. vacuums okay Big high note at the end. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, there's like I a big high note at the end, um, and the the way that you set up that high note is by set like letting you know it's coming. And if I don't do that right, then it won't be nearly as exciting for you. But um, you know, we'll we'll give it a go. Do you need me to beatbox? No, that's probably not appropriate. <laughs> Oh, and by the way, this is a, a, a little girl who asking, is asking her father to uh, give her money or to go buy a ring for the man she loves. So it's all about uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't relate to that and ask him about Christmas is coming if you need some tips.